Hi there, welcome back to Trigger Point Tuesdays. Cassie's out of the office today, so it's just going to be me. So basically, I can say whatever I want, and hopefully it goes over. So we're here with Jay today. He's one of our new graphic oh, designers. We just grabbed him off the desk. He's been glued to it for the past eight hours. You can see he hasn't even had time to change, to change clothes, get in his athletic gear. We're going to talk about hip mobility. And now last week, we addressed a little bit with the hips, but it was mainly how the ankles relate to hip mobility. We talked a little bit about the knee being there in the middle and how it basically pays the price of the two. But for today, we're going to jump on up and look at the hips. One of the things we don't realize, either with our athletes, even our, our desk jockeys or our everyday athletes, they lose mobility in the hips. Whenever you're in that hip flex position, you lengthen the hamstrings, you lengthen the glutes, and you basically just, just smash all that area together, and it just gets glued up throughout the day. And this is where that hydration and, and that mobility starts to come in, is if you don't have it, then whenever you get up and you ask your body to perform, it just can't do it. So let's go ahead and have him squat since he's been sitting. So let's go ahead and face the camera, and I'm going to do an overhead squat, so throw your arms up. That's going to put a little bit more tension here on the core and make those muscles fire better. And go ahead and do about five squats for me. Pretty ugly squat, I'm not going to lie. Well, let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. Keep on squatting. Let's notice how those hips will shift a little bit to the right-hand side. A little bit of an asymmetrical shift right there. We can see this hip getting bound up here. Turn and face that way if you don't mind. This way? Yep. Hands back up. Just about three more squats. We can see it as he comes down. It's not a smooth, coordinated motion. It's just getting bound up right through there. One more. Perfect, go ahead and relax. So one of the things we have to realize, whenever we look at hip mechanics, that femur that sits on the side of that acetabulum, it has to internally rotate during hip flexion. And a lot of times it just can't do it. So a couple of areas we're going to go after. We're going to start with the hamstring and where it ties into our adductor magnus. And then we're going to go to the opposite side of the joint and look at our TFL. You ready for that? Okay. So we're going to do the left side. Let's go ahead and take a seat. Perfect, and now we're going to position this pretty high, so notice how we have the quad ball there on the angled block. That's going to allow us to get some shearing motion through there whenever we do our mashing, so that way we can really create that separation in between the tissues. So for here, we're going to start in our zone four, so it's going to be pretty high. We want to be sure and be careful. We're kind of around the, the nether regions there, but all those muscles tie into those hips, so we need to get up there closer to the origin. Notice here, his hips are raised up. We're going to start with rolling back and forth four times. Heels planted into the ground, as much compression as you can get there. Now use that foot to roll back and forth four times. So there's one, two, and that's right there. Like I said earlier, hamstring and adductor magnus. There's three, one more. Now we're going to add some compression. So let's bring your right hand over, press down into that. Now here we're going to get a mash side to side. And notice, he's going to slide down that angled quad baller, and that's what's going to allow that mobility. Four of those. Perfect, and now we're going to get four scrubbing motions. So you can take both hands back down to the ground if you like. Now here we're going to go in a circle. So we're using the heel, using the hands, roll back and forth, and kind of get that motion through there. There's one, two, three, four. Let's go the other way, so four in each direction. How's that feel? Feels good. Perfect. All right, now we're going to go to that other side. So the other side of the joint, we're going to get the TFL right up in here. Now we go to the back side of the joint where we were. Now we get, need to get to that other side for this next one. So a prone position, so face down. And we're going to take that quad baller, set it there on the ground. Perfect. Still on the left leg. Right here? Yep, right there. Now in this position, notice he's going to bring this leg up to about 45 degrees. He's on forearm, hip is up just a touch. We're going to add some knee flexion here. This knee flexion is going to put the quads in traction, but it's actually going to relax that TFL just a bit, and he's in what we call our zone two. So from here, we're going to move up and back four times. So keeping that knee bent just a little bit more. So just, there we go. So back and forth. There's one, two, be sure we're breathing as we go through this, three, four, perfect. Now we're going to get some internal rotation. So he's keeping the knee here bent, and on the ground, and now just let that knee fall to the outside. What I want you to think of is he's pinning those tissues down as he's sort of manually making that femur go into internal rotation. Remember a moment ago I said that's what we were lacking. Perfect. Now for our scrubs here, we're going to take the toes to the ground, 
Perfect, and now plant the toe, and we're gonna use that to get that circular motion. So four times each side, one. Now again, we're separating those fascial planes, allowing that natural mobility to come back four times in each direction. And as I said, we're in zone two, our programming has three different zones for this area. And as soon as you're done there, go and hop up. Now from here, we're gonna take him right back into that squat. So let's face Amanda there, reach both hands up, and go ahead and squat. So automatically, you can see that that asymmetrical shift is basically gone. So this hip now can set back and down much easier. What we need to remember about asymmetries is asymmetrical dysfunction is a lot worse than symmetrical. So if you're shifting to one side, we're always going to shift away from restriction or away from pain. We need to go in there, allow those tissues to let that femur sit back and down, which I've probably already said three times now, and then you can get that normal range of motion back. Let's do a 90 degree turn and face that way. Hands up again. We'll look at it from this angle just real quick. So remember what we saw before, hip gets bound up, go ahead and come down into it. Let's do two more a little bit slower. Perfect, let's do one more here. You can see it set back, greater range of motion, go ahead and relax. We also saw better alignment through that ankle, knee, and hip. And so the point is, if we're going to be sitting all day, and then if you're going to ask your body to perform, we need to reintroduce that motion first. So before you go into your dynamic warm-up, or any sort of warm-up, remember, Prep first, prep the tissue, get it ready to take the load, then go through the dynamic warm up, and then perform whatever you need to do. So, thank you guys again for watching. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, be sure and post on our Facebook. We'll try to answer the questions as much as we can. And how are you feeling? Feeling good now. Awesome, great. Thank great you very much, sir. Thank you. The other leg, maybe yeah. later. Thank you, we'll see you guys next week.